Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or uh, if it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Lauren, and uh, today, today I'm gonna be spilling the tea on Boxy Lux. So I realized uh, this September marks the one year anniversary of Boxy Charm offering the Boxy Lux upgrade. I have received every single Boxy Lux box that Boxy Charm has released up to this point. I've purchased them all with my own money. I pay for my own regular Boxy Charm subscription as well. They have literally no idea who I am. And I thought it might be helpful to you guys, especially if you've been on the fence trying to decide whether or not to upgrade, to take a look back at the entire year of Boxy Lux to see whether or not it's actually worth upgrading. Because sure, of course, for an additional $28.99 for that one box. You take the value and you go from a guarantee of $100 to $250. Like, it seems like a pretty sweet deal. But if the extra money is not getting you anything as far as actual product that you're gonna use and enjoy, it's still almost $30 of your money that you're wasting. So we're gonna be looking back at the first four Boxy Lux boxes starting in September of 2018. And uh, I'm gonna share with you guys all the products that I received as part of the Boxy Lux upgrade. So we're not gonna talk about the regular products that came in all Boxy Charm boxes because those you could get whether you upgraded or not. We're just gonna focus on the Lux upgrades and I'm gonna share what I actually have used, what I kept, what I gave away, and whether or not at the end of a year's worth of paying that extra $29, I felt like I actually made a solid investment. So whether you are here to learn more about BoxyCharm because you just learned about it or you've been literally hemming and hawing about it for the last year and you're trying to decide whether to upgrade or maybe you just like hanging out with me, in which case, thank you. That's that's very nice and awesome of you. Either way, we've got, uh, we've got lots of products to talk about. So let's get into things. So before I jump into the specific boxes themselves, let's just do a little brief overview of the deal with Boxy Lux. As I mentioned before, it's a quarterly upgrade. So you have to be an existing Boxy Charm subscriber. You have to already be paying $21 a month for their monthly box. I know that's a big deterrent for a lot of people because not everyone necessarily wants the monthly commitment. Subscriptions like FabFitFun are quarterly. They cost the same amount as Boxy Lux does, but you only have to pay for them four times a year. So if you're one of those people that doesn't wanna to commit to spending more than $200 a year, just know you're gonna do that with Boxy Lux. So Boxy Lux boxes come out every March, June, September, and December. As I mentioned before, it costs an additional $28.99 in those months to upgrade and get the Boxy Lux box instead of the regular Boxy Charm. However, you are getting more than double the guaranteed value of a Boxy Charm box. So, Boxy Charm, $21 a month, guaranteed at least $100 worth of product. Boxy Lux ends up being about $50 and you get $250 worth of product. Now, having received the first four Boxy Lux boxes, I'm gonna tell you right now, I have not received a single box worth less than $300. The best box as far as bang for my buck was my December 2018 Boxy Lux box. That one was worth $362. But as I mentioned before, if I didn't end up actually using any of the products that I paid for in the upgrade, it doesn't really matter what the actual number is. So let's get into each monthly box and I will give you an update on uh, where my Boxy Lux products are now. So starting back with the September 2018 Boxy Lux box, we got an additional seven products in our Boxy Lux box that were not given to the regular Boxy Charm subscribers. Now I would say out of all the Boxy Lux boxes, this is the one I probably have gotten the most use out of the products from. As I go through these, if you've been watching my videos in the last year, you probably will have heard me mention most of these things multiple times. For example, I just talked about this Juice Beauty Serum in a couple of videos. This guy's actually available right now during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty Sale. It's gonna be 50% off one of the days. But this is a really nice, very lightweight serum for someone with oily skin like myself. I did feel like it did a decent job, especially of reducing redness in my skin. I don't think it's as effective as some of my peptide infused serums. So I don't know that I personally would shell out the money to repurchase this, especially because I have so much skincare. But I can say I used this entire product up, which doesn't happen often with me in skincare because I got so much of it. So I obviously got my money's worth with this. I obviously enjoyed it because uh, I used the entire thing. Another thing I got a lot of use out of more 
this summer is the Ipanema Sunset Glow Oil from Sol de Janeiro. So I feel like when I first got the box, this kind of ended up sitting in a drawer and not really getting very loved just because we were going into fall and winter. And this is the kind of product you wanna put on bare skin. You wanna wear it when you have a dress on, tank tops, etc. And uh, I wasn't wearing a lot of those by the time that I got this. But this summer, I decided to bust it out and I really, really enjoyed this stuff. It makes you so glowy and so sparkly and it's extremely long wearing. Like you, you need to buff this off with a washcloth or a loofah in the shower or you're still gonna be glittery post showering. The only thing about it I don't love is the scent is like, it's not quite the same as the bum bum cream, even though it says that it's supposed to be the same. I feel like this smells just like a little off, a little weird. It's not quite as delicious, but it's not obnoxious. I don't feel like it's as scented as the bum bum cream. So once it's on me, I don't smell it. So I don't really mind. I don't think they actually make this exact product anymore. I believe this was limited edition from last summer, but this summer they launched another similar product called their Glow Motion oils or something like that. So if you were interested in a product like this, Sol de Janeiro still does make them, but this exact shade, I don't believe they make anymore. Still, I would definitely say this added value to the upgrade for me because I definitely did use this a bunch this summer and I still feel like I have a ton left. A little goes such a long way with this that honestly, like I don't know if it's still gonna be good by next summer. So that's kind of the only downside to a product like this. Like it's a lot for something that probably doesn't have a super long shelf life, but I feel like for, you know, getting it in a subscription box and not having to pay the full price, like I, I, I got some value out of it. And then this guy, I, I would be lying if I said this wasn't my favorite foundation brush, but like it's so expensive that it pains me to love it this much because I, I would feel guilty recommending it to you guys. But this Luxie Pro uh, Airbrush Foundation number 732 brush, this brush is magical. Mine right now is dirty because uh, I use it all the time, but it is the most beautifully soft dense foundation brush that just buffs on product so nicely. I've also washed it uh, a million times. I've used this so much in the last year and it is like new. It doesn't shed, it's held up beautifully. The construction of this is so solid. You have this really nice kind of copper ferrule and then a soft touch handle. It has a little divot on the side for your thumb so it's extra comfortable to hold. It's just, oh. It's heavenly. But this guy's $38 if you wanna buy it, which is a lot of money for a singular brush. I don't think I've ever spent that much money on a makeup brush, ever. So when I think about the $29 that I spent to upgrade to Boxylux last September, just this brush alone is probably worth the upgrade to me because I would still be saving $9 on it and this is a fantastic, fantastic brush. Now the one product I decluttered from this box was the Park Avenue Princess Chisel Palette from Tarte. This was a pretty big ticket item. It retails for I think like $45 normally and a lot of people were really excited to get this palette. The packaging on it was absolutely exquisite. I didn't really particularly like the shades that were in that palette. It was a six pan palette and it really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me because I felt like so many of the shades looked too similar on the skin or were shimmery and I'm not usually a big fan of shimmery bronzers. I already own the Tarte Pro contouring palette so I kind of felt like having both the chisel palette and the pro palette didn't make a lot of sense. So I actually ended up selling my chisel palette on my Poshmark account and making some cash money back. Because let's be real, when you are shelling out your own money for all these subscriptions, it gets expensive. So if you're not gonna use something, you might as well recoup some of that money back. And then the final two products from that very first Boxylux box were the R & Co Death Valley Dry Shampoo, but just in a travel sized can, and then a little tote bag here that says, totes a charmer. I'm not gonna lie, I actually surprisingly get a great deal of use out of this tote bag, and just these kinds of canvas totes in general. I use them to put products aside that I'm gonna bring to friends, I use them to carry stuff various places. I mean, it, it's a canvas tote bag. Do I really feel like it added monetary value to my box? Not really, because I mean, I can find tote bags everywhere now for a couple bucks, but I do use it. And then this guy, I'm not gonna lie, have not used this 
at all. I have so much dry shampoo, it's ridiculous, and I also have so many other travel cans. I've been trying to be better about getting through my minis, getting through my products in general, or giving things away if I haven't used them yet. So this just hasn't made it into the rotation yet unfortunately. Then we move into my December 2018 box, which I mentioned was the most valuable box that I've received thus far. That being said, I did not fall in love with as many products in December as I did in September. Now, one of the big ticket items from the December 2018 box was the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. This is a $90 day cream that so many people rave about and I was very excited to get this in my box. That being said, I didn't fall in love with this product. Like I, I wanted to, I tried it a whole bunch of times and I feel like it made my skin feel moisturized but I also felt like it was very heavily fragranced and I think it irritated my skin. Like I, I never really felt like my face looked amazing after using this and I definitely have seen results where I have been impressed with other skincare. So I just never find myself reaching for this guy. There are so many other skincare products that I have that I like more that this has just been sitting in my cabinet. I honestly am planning on giving it away. Maybe somebody else in my life would like to try it. But uh, yeah, this, this definitely did not add any value to the upgrade for me. Another thing I must confess I haven't used is my sponge gel buffer. I have two of these and I haven't used either of them yet. I don't know what my problem is. I, I just have so much body wash, I guess, that I always use those and I never think to bust this guy out. Maybe after this video, I should go put this in my shower because it smells lovely. This is in the scent Blossom Bliss and I can smell it very strongly through the packaging. To that point, I'm sure if you are someone that's sensitive to fragrance, you would probably want to avoid this like the plague because uh, it's uh, it's very smelly. But I know Coffee Break with Danny loves these things. She talks about how amazing they are. Like I've always kind of wanted to try one. I just for whatever reason haven't yet. So I, I definitely haven't gotten, I haven't gotten any value out of my sponge gel buffer, but maybe, maybe someday in the near future. Another really popular item that had a lot of people excited in the December Boxy Lux box was the Violet Voss HG Pro Palette. Now when this palette first launched, I feel like it was a lot more exciting because we weren't completely inundated with warm tone neutral palettes, but now, now every single brand has one or multiple. So this right here feels very basic in the current market. And the shadows in here are perfectly decent. I think that they create very nice everyday looks, but I can't say that this is one of my like everyday go-to palettes. I don't find myself loving the formula enough to want to reach for this over some of my other palettes. I mostly have to make myself use this guy because I know that I have it and I don't want to waste it. So while I definitely have gotten some use out of this, it wasn't like a big value to me because I have so many other eyeshadow palettes and this color story is something I have multiple times over in my collection. Probably the thing I've gotten the most use out of from my December Boxy Lux box was the set of Luxy brushes they included. Honestly, they are so mixed in with my brush collection. I didn't feel like trying to fish all of them out, but it was a really nice brush set that they included. I'll try to like stick a picture of it up here so you can see. I do very, very much like Luxy brushes and these ones with the pink hand are part of their like core collection. They're a lot less expensive than the collection this guy is from. This is from their Pro Tools line. Either way, I think they're very pretty. They're very soft. They wash well. They blend out your makeup nicely. I'm a fan. So I was really happy to get that brush set in my Boxy Lux box and I know I use those brushes all the time. The final two products from the December 2018 box, so there were six total in the upgrade, were the Grande Cosmetics Grande Lash Mascara. I immediately gave that one away because I've used Grande Lash before and I didn't like it. I felt like that mascara did literally nothing for my lashes. So that was like an immediate hard pass, which was sad to me because there were some other mascaras I think I could have gotten or other products instead of that. That was a variation item and I was really bummed that that's the variation that I got. And then we also got this little uh, rechargeable like battery pack and a little clutch that said Glam AF. I also gave those away. I just didn't really feel like they were my aesthetic. I already have a battery pack that I use and I just, I didn't really feel like I needed it. Felt like somebody else could get more use out of it than I ever would. Then we move into the first box of this year, the March 2019 Boxy Lux box. This one, again, 
was kind of mixed for me. Something that ended up being kind of like a surprise favorite for me was the Becca Ultimate Lipstick Love, and I got the shade Dusk. This is a really gorgeous, very neutral nude, and this lipstick is super, super creamy. It glides on really nicely onto the lips. It's very full pigment. I have found myself reaching for this like again and again and again. And no, this is not like the most expensive thing. Like this doesn't add the most monetary value to the box, but it definitely adds value as far as usability goes. Like you can never go wrong with a nude lipstick and when it's a really good formula that you like using for like, I consider that a win. I also got a surprising amount of use out of these Lily Lashes. I had always wanted to try this brand before, and to this day, this is still the only pair of Lily Lashes that I've ever owned, but I hope to add more to my collection because I really enjoyed these. These were part of their Foam Ink line, and this was a limited edition style called Gaia. I just found these to be very, very easy to apply. They were very comfortable. The actual lash fibers themselves look really nice. They have a good curl to them. This was not overly dramatic, but not overly natural. I just, I think they're beautiful and I've worn these a ton. And then this guy, my subscribers will know I have a love-hate relationship with because uh, I love the product to death, but I hate the price tag because it's absolutely insane. And that is the Iconic London Eyebrow Cushion. This is, I think, my favorite brow product I have ever used in my brows. I feel like I, I have a very particular set of standards when it comes to a perfect eyebrow product. My eyebrows are naturally thin, so using anything super chunky is usually very messy for me. I need something that offers more precision, but I have dark hair and I feel like the problem with a lot of dark brow products that are also ashy enough to match my natural brow hair tone are just like too intense and then I look like Groucho Marx and I have really intense eyebrows. This just fills them in perfectly. It's not too dark, it's not difficult to work with, it's just it's the best. It just sucks that it costs $40 for this compact. I cannot stand that it's that much money because it seems insane to me for a singular brow product. Like maybe for a palette, like a pro palette, something with powders that you could use for years and years. But like this, this is a liquid product. It's going to dry up. Like I can already tell it's not quite the same as it was when I got it back in March. And that really bums me out because just like the idea of having to repurchase this twice a year is like, Ugh. Now, something I liked from this month, but I wouldn't say ended up being like a holy grail product is the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. I actually expected to dislike this more than I ended up because I was just afraid it was going to be way too greasy and way too heavy on my skin. I'm super oily, but it actually wasn't too heavy. I liked using this as a night cream. During the day, especially in like the spring and summer, it was a little bit much, but I think going into fall and winter, my skin generally kind of mellows out a little bit. It's a little more combination. I think I will get more use out of this, but I haven't necessarily wanted to put aside all of my other skincare to focus on using this guy. Like I tried it out for a couple of weeks, I liked it and then it went back on their shelf so I could use other stuff. Another thing I'm a little meh about is this nail polish duo from Deborah Lipman. I was actually kind of let down by this formula because I've heard so many good things about Deborah Lipman and her polishes are very expensive, but this chipped on me so quickly. And like I use the same nail zinc top coat and base coat. I've been using them forever and with other polishes, I don't usually have a problem with chipping. Like if I'm wearing KO polish, I'll at least go three to four days without any chips. And I generally tend to chip my nails quickly because I am one of those people that's very fidgety. I use my nails for everything. I don't wear gloves when I wash dishes and stuff. So like I know my nail polish just breaks down faster, but this was chipped in like 24 hours or less. And it's a shame because the colors are really beautiful. They're kind of rosy, mauve like very pretty. They're something I would definitely get a lot of use out of otherwise. But I also do have polishes in these exact kind of shades in formulas I like better. So this again is something like, eh, I, I kind of feel meh about. I honestly probably will declutter these. Speaking of decluttering, the two things from this box that I've already gotten rid of, uh, we got a little train case. They definitely gave these little like bonus items in the first couple of boxy Lux boxes. I don't know that they did one for June, but we'll, we'll get there momentarily. But I didn't really need the train case. I already have three of them. Like I, I just, I didn't need another. It was kind of a cool textured pattern. It was hollow and rose gold. I ended up giving it to a friend 
who I think is enjoying it. So I, I was happy to share the love, but obviously that did not add any value to the upgrade for me. And then I also gave away the Morphe Nightmaster 15N palette. I actually never even touched it. I didn't swatch it. I gave it away brand new because like I just knew I was never going to reach for that eyeshadow palette. I'm not really a big fan of Morphe. If you want to use it, like I know that they're a pretty affordable brand, so you do you. I personally am just like not really into them as a brand. There are a lot of other affordable companies I'd rather give my money to. So that's just me. And the shades in that palette were nothing that I didn't have in other palettes. So I just felt like it would have been a waste for me to keep it. So I gave it away. It also wasn't like a very valuable thing in the box. It would normally retail for $16. So I didn't even really feel like I was losing out on all that much by giving it away. So finally, let's get into the most recent Boxy Lux box, which was June of this year. So this June box, I really felt like was probably the most underwhelming of all the Boxy Lux boxes that I got so far. I definitely have only really gotten solid use out of one product. And that product is the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow Serum. I freaking love this stuff. It is amazing. It's an alpha hydroxy acid serum. You put it on your skin at bedtime and it just leaves you so glowy and smooth in the morning. It's just, oh, it's so nice to use. You're only supposed to actually apply it like maybe two to three times a week. But I mentioned this in a previous video. Like it's the kind of thing that you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, I want to use this every day because I want to look like this all the time. So yeah, I definitely at least got my money's worth with the upgrade because this is like a $60 serum. So I essentially got this at like half price getting it in the box. So I know I didn't really waste any money upgrading to Lux in June, but everything else was kind of like, yeah, okay. I got the Living Proof Full Dry Volume Blast Spray, which I actually do really like this product, but I already have a can of it. So I haven't needed to crack into the back up yet. To be honest, I'm still trying to finish up a bunch of other like texturizing sprays and Honestly, my favorite one I think is the IGK Beach Spray. Like that stuff is amazing. I would much rather have two cans of that than have two cans of this, but I'm like not gonna let this go to waste. Another thing that I'm kind of like, I'm not upset about, but I'm not in love with is the Dr. Brandt Clean Biotic pH Balanced Yogurt Cleanser with Chlorophyll. So uh, I've used this a few times now and it's a very nice, very, very gentle cleanser. This is not to me something you wanna use to remove makeup. It does not have a ton of cleansing power, but as like a morning cleanse that's very gentle, it's not gonna dry or strip your skin, it's nice. Now, did I need a cleanser? Absolutely not. I have like seven of them in my cabinet. So this is something that definitely didn't add a ton of value to me personally, just cause like I, I really didn't need this product, but I am at least using it. So like, again, it's not going to go to waste. And then the last thing that I have used, but also kind of feel like, I didn't really need is this little blow dryer from PYT. This thing is freaking adorable. And I did take this with me on a trip. It was quite handy, but I already owned a travel blow dryer. I have the baby buttercup from uh, Dry Bar and I absolutely love that guy. It is however, a little bit bigger than this. Um, they both do come with their own little like carrying cases and this with the attachments in the case is just like a hair smaller than the buttercup. But the buttercup has a handle that is like collapsible so it becomes a lot more compact in its little bag. So yes, this was again like the big ticket item for the June box. This guy's like an $80 hair tool and I think it's nice. I think it works fine. But again, I really, I really didn't need it. And then the final two products uh, I haven't used at all. So I have gotten zero value out of either of these products. They are this Tristique mascara that has this weird little built-in uh, eyelash curler in it, which is very interesting. And then the Skin & Co Truffle Therapy Illuminating Skin Refresh Mist. So when it comes to the Tristique mascara, I'm gonna declutter this. Like I, I already know I'm gonna declutter it because I have tons of other mascaras and I'm really just not super interested in trying this out. I feel like there are many other things, many other formulas I'm more curious about than this one. And I would rather it not sit in my drawer for another year and go bad when somebody else could use it. This guy, however, I'm like more on the fence about just because I've received a couple other Skin & Co products from FabFitFun. So now I have like a whole little line. I have the cleanser, I have the toner, and I have the face mist. And I don't know what to do. I'm kind of like, do I just try them all to see how I like the range, to have an opinion on it, or do I give away the whole thing? It's like a nice little set. So I'd be curious to hear from you guys. Like, are you curious about Skin & Co? Would you want to hear my 
feedback on these products because I think if there's interest, then sure, I'll review them. But if nobody really cares, I feel like it would probably be wasteful for me to keep them, honestly, because I do have a lot of other skincare and other things that I'm enjoying testing out. So like I could give them all away unused to someone in their current condition. All right, so now that we have gone through each of the individual boxes, we've talked about all of the products, let's take a bird's eye view. Let, let's talk a little bit about what I actually spent in a year and, and how much value I got monetarily. So the extra cost to me, in addition to the cost of BoxyCharm, to have the Lux upgrade for an entire year was $116 plus tax. I got an additional 26 items from the Lux upgrade, you know, in addition to what I got from my regular BoxyCharm box. So that works out to a cost of $4.40 six cents per product. Now for something like the tote or uh, this uh, little headband here, I mean $4.46 is probably about what I might expect to pay for that thing. But for, you know, this foundation brush or my eyebrow cushion here, uh, only having to pay five bucks for these, pretty freaking sweet. However, as I've clearly demonstrated, I, I didn't keep or end up using every single item. So in that case, it's kind of not actually accurate to say that each product was worth $4.46. So I basically decided that there were 10 products out of the 26 that I received that I actually got decent use out of. That would be the foundation brush, my little headband here, the Sol de Janeiro glow oil, the Juice Beauty Serum, and the Becca lipstick, the Lily lashes, and the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow, the set of Luxie brushes, the iconic London eyebrow cushion, and this little guy. I, I gotta give it to this little guy. I actually use it. So let's just pretend these two guys here are freebies for a minute just because, you know, they're not very monetarily valuable products to begin with. So if I take those eight products that I actually have used and uh, divide that from the $116 that I spent, that would make each of these products here $14.50. Now with the exception of the Lily Lashes, because I think these normally retail for like $16, so I think paying $14.50 for these to me doesn't seem like a real big value. But everything else here, if you told me I could buy them for $14.50, I think I would. And I would feel like I was getting a really good deal. So I just looked up the prices of these eight products. And uh, actually, <laughs> these Lily Lashes are apparently $25. My bad. So the total of these eight products is $365. So uh, I essentially, I paid $116 for $365 worth of stuff. That's essentially the equivalent of getting like a 70% discount on everything. So am I happy that I paid $116 extra dollars over the last year to get these four Boxylux boxes? Sure, I think there was enough in these boxes that I really ended up loving and enough value in the products that I liked to justify the extra cost. That being said, I did also end up with a lot of stuff I didn't need or didn't really want. And so I kind of feel like mm, I did kind of create a lot of waste this way. I definitely do share with other people. I don't throw things away ever. I always gift or sell whatever I'm not gonna end up using. But it does really give me a little bit of pause and make me think like, do I need to do this for another year, like am I really getting enough use out of the upgrade to make it worth it? I really enjoy unboxing the Boxylux for you guys so you can see what's in them and I can share my thoughts on it. So for now, my plan is to continue to purchase the upgrade, but I could see myself in the future like getting burnt out, needing a break, just having like product overload and, and needing to cool it for a little while. I honestly think that BoxyCharm and BoxyLux in general probably would be ideal for someone that doesn't already have a massive beauty collection. If you are looking to build up your beauty collection, it is a solid investment. Like you are definitely getting a lot of bang for your buck. And I think in a lot of these cases, if I didn't already have so much skincare and so much makeup and so much hair product, a lot of these products would probably be more interesting to me. So on that note, I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you already upgraded to BoxyLux? Do you think that it's worth it? Have you been enjoying your boxes? Or have you felt like most of the stuff you're not even using? Definitely be sure to leave a comment down below. Let us know what your thoughts and feelings are. And uh, if you are thinking about 
upgrading, I would highly encourage you guys to read the comments other people are leaving to see what they have to say. I also will link for you guys up here in the cards as well as in the description box, my playlist of unboxings. I have unboxed every single Boxy Lux box. I also have been unboxing my monthly BoxyCharm box try-on style. So if you wanna see everything that came in my Boxy Lux box, because I obviously only talked about the upgrade specific products, but I did receive more than that in my boxes and some of the products that all subscribers got, I actually really like too. So if you want a more like all encompassing boxy charm experience, go check out those videos. And if there's anything like I forgot or something that you would like extra clarity on, feel free to leave any questions you have for me in the comments below as well. And on that note, I, uh, I think that's everything I have to say about BoxyCharm and BoxyLux right now, but thank you again so, so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not subscribed and you wanna see my face again, you wanna come hang out another time in the future, make sure you click that button. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.